Hey, fellas. I want you to meet my new roommate. Uh, this is uh, Maurice Anta, Richard Borg, and our prize fencing student, Vincent Green. Jose De Palma. I hope to give you some competition, Mr. Green. Sure, but call me Vince. Everybody does. It's short for Vincent. What do we call you? For short, Jose Maria Cesare Cervantes, Conte de Parma e Prieta. I call him Joe for short. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you come from, Joe? I just transferred from Geneva. Oh. Did you have some trouble there? Well, I, I only mean transferring in the middle of the semester. Here comes Professor LaFleur now. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Good afternoon Professor. Professor. A new student, eh? We are pleased to have you join our class. Uh, how long have you been fencing, monsieur? Oh, about 700 years. <laughs> the Palmas are born with the sword in hand. I see. You place it, gentlemen. Hello, please. No, no. You do not wish to chop wood with your foil, Monsieur Borg. No, Monsieur. Your toe. There. Relax. That is better. Don't be discouraged. Uh, we'll make a fencer of you yet. The bind in step team, Monsieur Green. Out a little and complete supination. Good. Very good. Excellent, Monsieur de Palma. Only, do not hold your foil so fiercely. Uh, no one here wishes to rob you of it. There's no one here who could. Relax. Hold your foil lightly. Hold it uh, always as though it were a bird. A falcon, for instance? Oh, no, Monsieur. Not a bird of prey. Uh, rather a dove of peace. Gently, so that you will not crush it. But firmly, so that it will not escape you. Do you follow me? I don't know, Monsieur. I've never been interested in ornithology. But I am devoted to fencing. So am I. Let us try a few parries. As you wish. Septine, octave, ceased, and cart. In that order. Septine. Good. Octave. Ceased. Cart. Nice. Very nice. Only you hold your foil lightly, as I showed you. When you grip the handle so hard, as you do, it is easy for your opponent to knock it out of your hand. Now, let us try again. Lightly this time, lightly. Cart. Let us try again. No repost this time, please. I'm sorry, Professor, but it appears your dove was held too lightly. The master saw it. Return it to him. He told you not to repost. He dropped his guard. Did he? I misunderstood. A hundred pardons, monsieur. It is of no importance. Perhaps as 700 years of swordplay, the De Palma hearing is not so good. <laughs> Touché! Don't you ever stop, Joe? I like fencing too, but you're almost fanatic about it. Perhaps you don't understand because you're an American. To a Spaniard, fencing is just as important as, as basketball is to your countrymen. I understand, all right. Still, what are you aiming at, the Olympics? Right now, all I want is to represent this school at the Lausanne Intercollegiate Fencing Matches. I want that cup. So that's it. I figured there was something behind your quitting Geneva right in the middle of the term. Couldn't make their team, huh? I would have made it. That Australian instructor was spiteful. He maneuvered so the two Britishers came out ahead of me. You've got to be cock of the walk or you won't play, is that it? Don't worry. I will be yet. Geneva's entering those two Britishers at Lausanne. By the time I get through butchering them, I guess they'll know who they're reckoning with. Phew, you really get violent. 
No wonder our gentle professor rubs you the wrong way. But suppose Lafleur doesn't enter you. He wouldn't be such a fool. My victory as his student would be a feather in his cap. He may criticize my style of fencing, but he's smart enough to know its results that count, not how you get them. Considering he hasn't had a prize fencer in three years, he can use a little publicity. <laughs> Joe, I think you may be in for a big surprise. <laughs> I don't think so. If I want something, I always find a way to get it. No, no. To disengage your post. Let me show you. You see? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Try again. Do you hate Monsieur Green? Why should I? But you tried to hurt him. With the foil in your hand, he becomes your enemy. Almost as though you wish to run him through. I took no unfair advantage. It was up to him to put up a better fight. He had a weapon in his hand also. Oh, he wasn't fighting. He was fencing. And the foil is not a weapon. It is an instrument of art. That is why we use it for the beauty of movement, for the grace of perfection, and never, never for the brutality that this sword once stood for. I resent your remarks, monsieur. I have broken no rules of fencing. You most certainly have. You offend the spirit of fencing. Monsieur de Palma, you have great skill. But I tell you in all sincerity that unless you stop fencing as though you were on a medieval battlefield, you will never become a great fencer. Relax, monsieur. You have no enemies here. No one hates you. I did not join your class, Professor, to win a popularity contest. <laughs> Very well. Until the next lesson. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, Professor. Good day, Professor. That overgrown windbag. Always nagging at me. Yes, me too. Nothing I do is right either. I made a fence not to listen to sermons about birds and art. Right. A sword is to fight with, not to dance. A bird, monsieur. A soft little pigeon. Hold it. Cuddle it. Ah, careful. Does that aging hand tremble? <laughs> oh, so tenderly we hold our little pigeon. And then, voila! But where is our little pigeon? Gone. Chased away. And our poor weary professor. He is too old to fly out. <laughs> You're not funny, Joe. <laughs> I'm willing to defend my sense of humor. Your foil, monsieur. Let's see how good you are without your little toy. Steve Marshall, I invited you for coffee. Have you forgotten? I've had my fill of you. You find yourself another roommate before tonight. You hear? But supposing you had won your fight with De Palma, what would you accomplish? Can you stop a lie with your fists or prove a truth with your foil? No. Violence shows nothing except that you are stronger or more skillful or <laughs> perhaps luckier. It never proves the truth or right or justice. I know, but all the same, Professor, there's a limit to getting pushed around. That is the age-old dilemma of the man of peace, my boy. You and I. We come from countries which have always loved peace. Mine is the older country. I am an older man. Perhaps that is why such little flea bites don't irritate me so much. He is the kind of man you can get along with on his terms or on bad terms. Sooner or later, something Ignore must... Ignore him, Steve. Men like De Palma succeed only when we yield to the provocations. He wants to fight. Very well. But if no one will fight with him, he will soon find himself alone. I wonder. Do you remember a German poem? Even the best man cannot live in peace if it pleases not an evil neighbor. An exaggeration, my boy. It is the privilege of poets. <laughs> so we came to make sure, that is to ask you, Professor, that us who will be represented at Toussaint. We didn't send anybody last year. It's the most important event of the year. 
And after all, we're entitled to see our school make a good showing. Well, I... Uh... Everything all right, gentlemen? The coffee cake is delicious, Madame Doctor. Thank you, Monsieur Borg. I am as eager as you are to have one of my students participate. I had considered Monsieur Green. But, sir, Vinnie could never take the cup. You said yourself that... Yes, another year would be better. He is not yet nimble enough. But he has great style. It's style. Style is for ballet dancers. It, it's results that count. You sound like Monsieur de Palma. Perhaps. And I agree with him. Because he can beat him at Lucerne. He swears he'll bring that trophy back no matter what. He'll make us the envy of every school in Switzerland. Couldn't you make a decision in Palma's favor, sir? I'll let you know. It is something that must be considered carefully. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, monsieur. Good day, madame. Goodbye. Good day, madame. Bye. Thank you for coming, gentlemen. What is it, Henry? You seem perturbed all of a sudden. It's De Palma. How quickly he has taken hold of all of them. I have been watching him. He loves fencing only for the violence he sees in it, and not for its sport. He has no sense of fair play, and if I send him to Lausanne, the matches will deteriorate into barbarism. I don't want such a man to represent my class. All right. Only you must not excite yourself, Henry. You know you mustn't. All right, dear. Well, well, his royal highness himself. And I see you brought your bodyguard with you. What do you want? Did you know Lafleur turned me down for the Lausanne matches? No. Well, good for the old boy. Look, Steve, we know the professor has it in for Parma just because you and he got into fight. But we won't stand for it. Why should our school take a back seat? What's gotten into you guys? This used to be a peaceful place. We were all friends. Now, since he's come, the whole school's divided into camps. Half the guys don't talk to each other. For my money, you've all gone crazy. We didn't come to hear a lecture from you. Then scram, I didn't invite you. Now, wait a minute, Steve. We didn't come here to quarrel. We just thought, you're Lafleur's favorite, his friend. If you would speak to him, explain the whole thing, it would please the whole class. I'll do nothing of the kind. All right. We gave you a chance to spare your precious professor some trouble. You won't take it. Fine. I shall show him no mercy, or you either. Who is not for me is against me. That sounds familiar. But as long as Lafleur chooses to stand up against you, I'm for him, 100%. The professor has more spunk and integrity in his little finger than all of us roll together. Now get out of here. I don't want to hear any more about it. All right. You will hear more about it, Mr. Marshall. The fun is just about to begin. We'll continue with the second act of our play in a moment. I don't know, but I don't like the looks of it. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon. Steve? Hello. Monsieur Lefleur, before class begins, we should like to know, is it definite that our school is not entering the Lausanne meet this year? That is correct. Why? Such a decision, Count de Palma, rests with the fencing master and the director of the school. No explanation is required. I disagree. That is your privilege. Your place is, gentlemen. You are aware, monsieur, that the class wants me to represent our school in intercollegiates. They think I'm good enough to win. Again, I remind you, Count de Palma, that the decision is mine. I don't think you are good enough. Then prove it. There isn't anyone here who is better than I. And that includes yourself. If you don't believe it, then let us fight it out without masks. You're insane. If you can beat me, 
we should withdraw our objection. Why, I don't fight duels. I'm an instructor. And you refuse? Of course. Why? Because you're afraid I'll show you up? That's a lie. He just won't stoop to your level. Keep out of that. Please, please. Count de Palma, it is against my principles to settle any issue in the manner you suggest. I do not intend to violate those principles, even to prove that you are wrong. We know that in a duel of platitudes, you will always win. But you no longer convince anyone. I say you are afraid to fight me. If I am wrong, prove me wrong. I repeat my challenge. Unless you wish to plead old age. We have already lost precious time. Your place is, gentlemen. I told you I'd prove him a coward. Now you back me up as you promised. Monsieur, in view of the obvious, we no longer wish to study with you. Come. Professor. Thank you, gentlemen. There will be no lesson today. I am sure you understand. Steve, do you really think it was principal with the old boy? After all, he's taken an awful lot of guff. No, the professor's solid. He'll let that miserable Palmer blow himself out. And everything will get back to normal. But you wouldn't listen to me. All right. After a few weeks, when the semester is over, I will think about it. Not after a few weeks, Henry. The doctor said it must be at once. Henry, you mustn't be stubborn. Please, Henry, for my sake. What did I tell you? That walkout didn't last very long. We came only to walk out again. And we will continue to protest every day until the professor gives up. You can't bulldoze the professor into quitting. Don't flatter yourself. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Good afternoon Professor. Your places, please. Monsieur Le Fleur, I've challenged you. I'm here for your answer. Gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. Your places, please. This foil was given to me by my first fencing master, the great Cavazzo, on his retirement. Not for good fencing, but for good friendship. He'd regret it if he were alive today. I have kept it these many years in high honor. Honor? What is that? I have brought this foil today because I have resigned as the fencing master of this school as of today. No. What? Well, that was easier than I thought. We've only to talk to the director now. He will be more agreeable. But, Professor Lafleur, It isn't necessary to resign. It should just end the Parma. Even without a duel, we'll come back for our lessons. If I may continue, gentlemen. I wish, on this day of my retirement, to pass along this beloved sword to the student among you, who is not only my pupil, but my very dear friend. Steve Marshall. But why have you resigned, Professor? Steve, you too. No, Professor, but... But... We uh, want to believe in you. If you would only explain, Professor. I have my reasons. Personal reasons. But I prefer not to give them under these circumstances. You must take my word for it. 
Come, Mr. Green, Mr. Marshall. You are not behaving like gentlemen. I demand no reasons. Fear, you know, is beyond reasoning. I had thought that if a man had a bad neighbor, he could shut himself up in his own house and yet live in peace. But I was wrong. Evil is contagious. Already it has touched all of us. Count de Palma. Count de Palma, we hold our foils for different reasons. I do not like your reason. I do not like it when I find it in you or in things larger than you. I am a peaceful man. But you do not know how to live in peace, and so must always seek to destroy it. And therefore, although fighting is against my principle, I must now violate it in order to defend it. And God, monsieur! He'll wear himself out this way. Palmer's not so confident now. He was counting on a quick victory. in a vulnerable position. If you were all that you think you are, you should be able to finish me off quickly. But you're not good enough. Your eagerness deflects your sword. Your hate shatters your control. Hey! Look at him now, he's frantic. Ah! Ah! Look at the old man's fence. Ah! He's practically standing still. He led Palmer on and Palmer thought he was cornering him. strain of a good beating. You boys did nothing to force him to leave. No, sir. Everyone just laughed at him wherever he went. After a couple of days, well, I guess his uh, sense of humor dried up. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. You have learned an important thing, that laughter, in the end, is a stronger weapon than the sword. Now we must let Henry rest. To come soon again to see my husband, yes? <laughs> of course. See you soon, Professor. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye, Madame Lafleur. Goodbye. Professor, when the doctor says you're up to it, the boys would like to have a little dinner in your honor. Good. Then I shall get the chance to finish my farewell speech after all. Have you, have you forgiven me, sir? Oh, there was nothing to forgive, Steve. Come. Come with me. Cavazzo's sword is still waiting for its new owner. Thank you, sir. 